We're now going to move on to standing sound waves. And these are a little bit different than standing waves on a string. So standing waves on a string, you needed two fixed boundaries. So you needed a boundary on each end, and the rules were all the same because you had two boundaries. Sound behaves a little bit differently. So let's start by just looking through, I'm sorry, looking at what sound waves do. Instead of moving like a transverse wave, so if you remember transverse waves looked like this, and then if you had your two fixed ends with your nodes and anti-nodes, then you would have a second wave. So this was a standing transverse wave. Sound wave is a longitudinal wave, so it's going to have these compressions and rarefactions. So compressions are where you have the higher pressure, those would be considered your crests. The rarefactions are where sound waves are spread out, so that would be the trough. And in reality, uh, this is obviously a spring, but sound waves are more with what the air molecules are doing. So really you would have like a whole bunch of air molecules and then fewer, and then a whole bunch of air molecules and then fewer air molecules. So you get the idea, a whole bunch fewer, and then a whole bunch of air molecules. So I know that looks really terrible, but that's what's going on when sound moves through air. So it's the molecules that are moving, compressing, and rarefacting the same way a spring would. So when you have a standing sound wave, that's going to be when a sound wave is traveling in a tube and it's eventually going to reach a discontinuity. So, And all a discontinuity means, it's, the, it's a change in pressure. So when the sound wave hits that discontinuity, you're going to have part of the wave going back into the tube and part of the wave being reflected out. You don't need to know so much why it's happening, more about what actually does happen when you have a standing sound wave. There are three different possibilities for standing sound waves. The first is called an open, open tube. So open, open, and we will, I will show you pictures of all of these. But an open, open tube is when you have both ends of a tube open. The second possibility is a closed, closed tube. So that's where you're going to have a boundary at both ends. And then the third possibility is an open, closed tube where there's a boundary at one end and the other end is open. So it's just going to be easier if you can see what this looks like. The one thing you need to know when doing these is that the closed ends are going to have your nodes and your open ends are going to have your anti-nodes. So over on the left we have open open tubes and your open ends have the anti-nodes. So for m equals 1 it's going to look like that and that's a really bad so let's try this again. So an open open, open, open tube with mode number 1 will look like this. For m equals 2, we're going to have this shape. And for m equals 3, We'll have this. Obviously those would be more evenly spaced. The easiest way to look at these open open tubes and remember the mode number is to count, for lack of a better word, footballs. So you have the general football shape. This is a half plus a half. This would be one full football. This is one, two footballs. This is one, two, three footballs. Again, uh, not the best analogy, but I think the easiest way to remember what the mode number is for open open. Same goes for closed closed. So for closed closed tubes, uh, the mode numbers are going to be the same. So this is one, two, th one, two, and three. Your nodes are at the closed ends. So m equals 1, this should all be in the tube. Let me try and redraw that. You have one football. For m equals 2,
you have two footballs. And for m equals 3, you have three footballs. If you ever see a question about pressure, so what these graphs are showing you right now are for displacement, so this is where the air molecules are as they're in the tubes. Um, if you ever see a question asking about pressure as opposed to displacement of the molecules, these would be the complete opposite. I've only seen one or two questions ever asking about pressure, but just be aware these refer to displacement of the molecules as opposed to pressure. For pressure, these are reversed and they look different. If you're thinking about displacement in the air molecules, and I will demo this, at the open end of a tube, you're going to have the greatest amount of displacement. That's where the sound's going to be most amplified or the loudest. So that's a good way to think about why they're open, or sorry, the antinodes are at the open ends. Before we look at the third case, let's get what wavelength and frequency are for open-open and closed-closed because it does work the same for both of these. Wavelength for open-open or closed-closed tubes is the same as standing waves on a string. So lambda m equals 2 times the length of the tube over mode number m equals 1, 2, 3, etc. We know that frequency would equal m times the wave speed over 2L. And I'm not going to show you again, but that's just because frequency and lambda are inverses of each other. We know speed's not going to change since the medium's not changing inside the tube. It's also going to be equal to m times the fundamental frequency. And again, m equals 1, 2, 3. Keeps on going. You need to know these, so you just need to memorize what lambda and frequency are. Uh, I'm not giving them to you, and they wouldn't be given on the formula sheet, so you do need to just know and memorize this. Okay, now the third case would be a combination. So, open-closed tubes. And these work a little bit differently. For open-closed tubes, you can only have odd harmonics. So you're going to have m equals 1, m equals 3, and m equals 5. You just need to memorize that. You can only have odd, number odd numbered harmonics. Remembering that the antinodes are at the open end and the nodes are at the closed end, you're going to have a node here, antinodes at the open end, m equals 1 is going to look like this. m equals 3, so again, we only have odd-numbered harmonics. We'll look like that. And m equals 5. will look like this. The formulas for frequency and wavelength are also going to be different for open-closed, so again, something you need to memorize. And I will go over those in a minute. But just looking visually at each of these diagrams, this right here is considered one-fourth of a wave. If you think of it, it's half a football. For one wave, you need two footballs, so half of two is one-fourth. This one right here is one and a half, so that would be three-fourths of a wave. And here we have one, two and a half footballs, so this would be five-fourths of a wave. The formulas will explain how I got those if you're not seeing it visually, and those are coming up right now. When you're dealing with a closed open or open closed tube, the fundamental frequency is going to be half, and so will the wavelength. So your lambda for each mode number will equal 4L over M, but M is only odd. 
So one, three, five keeps going. Your frequency will equal m times the speed over 4L. It's still going to be m times the fundamental frequency. But once again, m is only equal to odd numbers. So 1, 3, 5 keeps on going. If you're having trouble remembering that, uh, just think that for an open closed tube, m is not the number of antinodes, m is twice the number of antinodes. So that's why this comes out to be 4 instead of 2. Okay, let's do an example to see how this all works. We'll do a little bit of practice with this and actually drawing out different uh, standing sound waves, but let's just look at the numbers and see how those work out. Wind instruments have an adjustable joint to change the tube length. Players know that they may need to adjust this joint to stay in tune, that is, to stay at the correct frequency. To see why, let's suppose that a cold flute plays the note A at 440 Hz when the air temperature is 20 degrees. First thing we want to know is how long the tube is, and it tells us the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. So let's just draw this out. Um, wind instruments are going to be open, open. So here's our tube. Open, open, we're looking for the fundamental frequency, so this is just going to be m equals 1. Tells us that the fundamental frequency is 440 hertz, that the speed is 343 meters per second, and we're looking for the length of the tube. So this is open, open. We know that F1 equals mv over 2l. m is 1. So rearranging, we get l equals mv over 2f. So this just equals 343 meters per second over 2 times 440 hertz. And this comes out to... 0 0.389 keeps on going meters. So the length is about 0 0.39 meters. Looking at part B, the player blows air through the flute and the air inside is going to warm up. Changing the temperature of air will also change the density. If the density changes, then your medium is going to change. The sound will travel at different speeds through air at different temperatures. Once the temperature has risen to 32 degrees, the speed of sound is going to increase to 350 meters per second, and we want to know what the frequency is. So your mode number is still going to be 1. Your frequency is still going to be equal to mv over 2l. We found the length in the first part, so this just equals 1 times 350 meters per second over 2 times 0 0.39 meters. And this comes out to 449 hertz. And that's still considered f1.